there friends. So today we are in West Virginia and we came up here to film a pretty cool event. Um, they're gonna do a bison field harvest and then they're gonna stick the bison on a spick and roast it like a rotisserie chicken. Uh, so that might sound horrible to some of you, but it sounds really good to me. The cool thing about this event is that the attendees will get to participate in the field harvest, which means that they'll be able to help um, field dress the bison. And then once it is uh, field dressed, they will uh, hang it, they'll cut some steaks, they'll learn how to cut some steaks out of it. And then they're going to roast it overnight and have a big dinner with about 130 people um, the next night. So this is gonna be a pretty cool event. chose to raise bison is because we could field harvest them. And I felt that transparency piece was really important as a meat eater. So um, a handful of years ago, probably about 2014 or so, I started doing a lot of reading on butchery and the slaughter system uh, that's that we use in our country and where beef really comes from and what those animals have to go through and things like that. And considered becoming a vegetarian, but I'm, I'm a carnivore at heart, <laughs> so through and through. So I thought the answer was we really needed to get into the business and actually be the change that we wanted to see in the system. And come to find out, there's lots of folks out there like me and like you guys who are super interested in that and wanting to do the right thing for the animal and have really good, clean, honest meat. So we started meeting a bunch of people, you know, who do these types of things. And we wanted to start offering something locally to folks to be able to come out and see what it takes to put an animal down and what it takes to eviscerate an animal and get the hide off and things like that. Um, so we started doing these classes. This is the third one we've done and we're excited to keep doing these. It did take me about three years to work with the state to get them to allow us to do this even though I knew we could. Regulations allow you to do that with bison because they're considered an exotic species. And now that we do it with bison, I'm slowly on my way to trying to convince them to do it with beef too, because there's no reason why you can't do it with beef. Um, so how many of you guys have seen an animal be put down before? Kind of have these a little bit, okay. All right, um, for me, I did not grow up hunting and I did not grow up watching animals be put down. We didn't have a farm. We didn't kill our own chickens, things like that. So when we put our first animal down in 2017, it was shocking to me. Um, I didn't even see it. I actually just heard the gunshot and I lost it for about 15 minutes. <laughs> so I had to go for a walk and I told Jimmy, I was like, I think we need to get out of the business. I don't think I can do this, <laughs> things like that. So but um, it, it never gets easier, to be honest with you, and you could ask Philip that too. It's, not, it's never an easy process, but when it's a humane process, it makes a big difference. Um, this animal is not loaded up on a trailer, is not waiting at a slaughterhouse, um, does not have to go into a knockbox to, um, to be shot and killed. It is literally gonna be out here eating grain, which they don't usually get, so it's kind of a treat. Um, totally relaxed and down in one shot. So that whole stress factor that usually happens in the slaughter facility is totally negated. And that makes a big difference to me. And it's hard to tell the difference in the meat, but um, technically they do say the stress hormones in animals is in our meat and we're eating that, that cortisol and stuff like that. But most of us have never had meat that doesn't have that in that. So we've, we, we wouldn't notice the difference. But today you'll get to see, and then you'll get to take a piece of the tenderloin or strip loin home and taste test that. Yes, it's bison, but you know, just, it'll be, it'll be a different flavor, most definitely. And you guys are welcome to come on into this pasture. There's no animals in this pasture. They're all gonna be in here eating grain. I think I had a couple animals jump the fence last night. Okay. I had three in here, yeah. there's six. <laughs> He's about two. He's just about two, yeah. So he's on the young side. It's not some 
He's not some massive, huge, big bull that, you know, we're gonna put on the spit. We choose one that will fit on the spit <laughs> and feed about 130 people because I don't want to waste any meat. So, so yeah, so he's about two. Yeah, so he's probably about uh, maybe 700, 800 pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So the bull is that one with the horns, you see him behind those three. Right in there anywhere is okay. Right now. That's all right. Just let me uh, yeah, let me step up here. Exactly yeah. He'll get yeah. He'll get curious. Yeah, it kind of depends. Nah, he'll he'll come back. Is there one more in here? There's a mama, and I don't know how many are back there. Is there two more back there? There's nobody else? No. Oh. They're right against the gate back there, though. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll just walk back there and just let him ease up this way. You want me to, you need any brain to motivate him up No, I think he'll come just to the other one. one looking right, right at us too, that's fine. He can go down. We've got one straight back over here, behind this female that's crossways to us. Okay, right behind her. That's the one with the big one. They're behind 975. That's because that's it's her calf. This one? Yeah. That's fine. Now I know exactly how YouTube policies go on this. So we cannot show the impact and we cannot show how this animal is taken from a dead animal into a food source. So we're gonna skip ahead here a little bit. If you wanna watch the unedited version of this, check out our Rumble channel. Um, you'll be able to see the whole thing there. Uh, basically what we have, uh, this would be like your inner, inner loins or filet mignon. And this would be your tenderloin or your New York strip in the beef category. Uh, when the bison, but a lot of people with the, uh, with the bison, the filet is a little bit smaller than a beef, but these on this bull are particularly fairly large. Um, what you wanna do is just kinda clean the membrane, like this one here, you clean some of this off. Just lightly kinda skin it, basically. What kind of knife is that that you're using? Uh, okay. This is a Vitronox butcher knife is what it is. It's a straight boning knife. Um, you can cook these with as whole whole pieces or you can slice them. Uh, the same way with the tenderloin, you just kind of clean it up. And the less you clean, or the, the less meat you get rid of. But you just want to take the membrane off of it. There's a thin layer in between it in the back of the tenderloin. A lot of times we just kind of clean it off. Same way as the other side, you just kind of clean it up a little bit. This one here, we took it out fairly good, so there isn't much cleaning to it. Uh, and then you would just slice crossways that the, your desired thickness for your steak. Does somebody else want to come try to do yeah, steaks? You want to come try to do some of these steaks? You got that side. No, Cause this one's ready to go. Oh, Let's do right there. That looks All good. Right. Right. Yeah, we'll do those strip points. Somebody want to try to slice this one?
rest of the trip. I was going to take this off because it's... Right there. You hear me there's a idea was it to do this. <laughs> <laughs>
Just make, you might want to get back in line for some of this. <laughs> oh, we haven't gotten any yet. Oh, you haven't gotten any? No, is that good stuff? It's pretty good stuff, yeah. I took a chunk out of the ribeye. It's a bit pretty, pretty moist, pretty good. I'll let my wife know so we get in line now. Yeah. 